Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. This is Ken Curra, Market Development Agronomist for Pride Seeds. I'm here at the uh, Canada's Outdoor Farm Show in Woodstock. We had a beautiful busy day yesterday, wonderful weather. We're a little overcast this morning and uh, we're expecting another big crowd. So we're going to talk a little bit before the crowd arrives on uh, some of the ailments that are happening in, uh, in some of the local cornfields. Seeing this fairly widespread across my territory. Think about the last few weeks weather basically since pollination. We've had uh, not outrageous heat but we've had some really uncomfortable days. We've had a lot of high humidity, haven't had a lot of fog, uh, morning mist. We've had a few here and there but not too bad for the first part of the school year when we're used to seeing some of those bus delays in the fog. But we've had moisture and we've had intense sunlight. And when you combine that high moisture situation, high humidity, and sunlight beating down on uh, those crops, not very good for preserving grain quality in the cereal crops or in the grain crops such as corn, wheat, uh, and the other spring grains. So we're going to talk a bit about what's jeopardizing grain quality today. First of all, you know, this is ideal, right? We would love to all have, you know, 18, 20 around, 35 to 40 long, 200 plus bushel crop. We'd love to have that seeing a lot of shortened up ears in the crops this year. You'll walk your fields and you'll see what looks like a normal husk length, a normal ear, but it's tapered in here. The ear has been choked off, a little bit pointy, wrapped up, uh, moisture is enclosed in there, the silks are balled up in there. If you open that up, you're going to find some certain ailments in there. We have a bit of a list to go through, we're going to try and touch on most of them. We see a lot of this, shortened up ears. Now, the layman's term, we'll call that beer can ear, or that's, uh, that's blood ear syndrome. And, you know, if you do some of the research online, you look at some of, the, some of the information there, and the cause of that really hasn't been pinned down other than a specific cold injury is suspected. If we look back uh, to the Woodstock weather station here, for instance, we dipped down to about 9 degrees Celsius on the night of June 9th, right when the corn was at about 4 or 5 leaf stage. In some area fields, I'm told their weather stations dipped down closer to 6, 6.2, somewhere in there. And that specific cold injury at a time during the V5 to V12 stage, when cob length and ear length is being determined, tends to lead to that beer can injury or that blunt ear injury, shortens it up. It's a very specific injury, shortens the ear, otherwise it looks perfectly normal. The husk, the husk leaves are the, are the correct length, the girth, the number of kernel around, number of rows is the normal 18 to 20 that we'd like to see, and yet it's been shortened right off, and that points to a specific injury rather than a, a, a stress that, dur that had a duration over time, a lingering stress like we experienced through the drought. So not a whole lot to pin that cause right down, but that is what you're seeing. And I really think that uh, that night of June the 9th, when things cooled right off, in combination with the fact that our soils through the month of May, through planting and right after planting, they really weren't that warm, especially underneath the furrow. So we have some subtle differences in ambient temperature right around that seedling that caused some damage. So this effect right here, not hard to find. Now, what does that lead to? This here I opened up. A lot of moisture, things are getting punky and rotten in here. We can see some, uh, some white mycelium mold starting to show up here. We'll find uh, Fusarium, we'll find Gibberella in there, and that's strictly a, a, a side effect of all those husk leaves being wrapped right up and trapping moisture in there, and then the heat working on it, and the rest is history. So we are seeing quite a few ear molds starting to pop up. Last week, really, really uncomfortable few days, uh, near 40 degrees on the humid X, temperatures, you know, 28 to 30, and intense sunlight for a few days there. All conditions that really just aren't doing us any favors in preserving grain quality and slowing this mold growth down. Days like today where it's 20, 21C, overcast, sun's not nearly as brilliant, uh, definitely slows that down. A return next week in the forecast to 24, 26 degrees and sunny, high pressure all week. Uh, not going to be great for trying to get this situation under control. If we walk around a little bit further in these fields, again, even a normal length here, we get those opened up and we're still going to feel that those silks are really, really moist as they're sitting there brown. They're tangled up in the, in the ear tip and that can lead to some of the molds we're seeing. What else? Western bean cutworm feeding, 
really prevalent in, in southwestern Ontario this year and, and starting to spread right across Ontario. We see that feeding in the top, the silks carved out. We see some of the boring in the sides and not surprisingly now in the, in the ideal conditions for mold growth, we're seeing uh, you know, white mycelium, fissural, uh, we're seeing white mycelium, we're seeing uh, fusarium and gibberella getting started in the tips of those ears. I get a lot of questions on yield loss to western bean cutworm. If every ear, so pick 30,000 in a given acre, if every ear has three to four kernels missing off the tip, that's about a bushel. So although this feeding is very shocking, I would really encourage growers who are kind of on the fence on the spraying this year and weren't sure what to do, evaluate your fields now, do your harvestable ear count, figure out how much yield loss you actually had and put that against your, uh, your spraying plans for next year and, and the spraying cost, uh, the insecticide cost and application. I'm also asked often about the impact of mold. Well, we know that uh, the development of those molds, certain molds can lead to uh, you know, feed quality issues and end user uh, shipment issues, uh, vomitoxin in the, uh, in, the, in the grain. Tends to start down against the cob and work its way out from the kernel. The one thing I have to stress is that visible amount of mold is not a solid indicator of the actual feed quality issue or the vomitoxin levels in part per million. We can have a lot of visible mold and yet that vomitoxin really doesn't develop. Likewise, we can look at an ear like this so we can see just a little bit of those molds starting to creep in down between the kernels and the rows. We could look at that and yet we get a surprisingly high vomitoxin count. So the only way again is to test. So the end users will likely uh, likely have this on their radar this year. If you feed hogs in particular or poultry, you need to test for this. This is important. Uh, most of those producers are, are more than familiar with that situation. So uh, my closing thought on molds. On the list of things we're seeing in fields we really don't like right now, uh, again, corn fields, we're actually seeing some sprouts seeing some sprouts in the tip kernels. Uh, Wheat Pete talked about this on his word last week, and it seems that those aborted kernels, and we're seeing a lot of that with tip back this year, kernels that are shrunken yellow, they, uh, they successfully pollinated, but then the, the cob aborted them, the plant aborted them due to stress, and those tip kernels have a viable embryo in them and no starch. And now we're getting absolutely ideal conditions for growth on the ear. So we're seeing those sprouts, especially where there's a fair bit of tip back. Even a normal ear like this, we have those tip kernels and that moisture is trapped in there. And now we've got heat hitting it over the last 10 days. And sure enough, we've got tip kernels sprouting. Am I really worried about this? This is an eyesore, first of all. Uh, but we're looking at those tip kernels. Pretty easy to, uh, to deal with them at harvest. The other thing is, is when that seed sprouts, it also rots. And I think, you know, we're three weeks away from the first harvest beginning in corn for the most part, once some guys get through soybeans and other crops. And these tip kernels are gonna rot away. The sprout's gonna be sitting there, the combine will mash it away and it won't be an issue. About 10 years ago, and I don't remember the specific year, we had an instance where a lot of cobs were sitting upright as they black layered, husks were tight, the corn plants were very healthy, much like you see here in our plots at the Pride Seed Site. You get moisture trapped down around the butt. And what happens there, in that instance about a decade ago, is we saw some of those butt kernels were starting to sprout in the heat in September. That's definitely a concern going into harvest, and let's hope we don't see that. Although I'll be honest, in a lot of fields, they're so healthy right now, they're very green. The ears are left upright as we approach black layer, uh, black layer layer this week and through next week. If moisture gets trapped in there, if we have the right environmental conditions, I wouldn't be surprised to actually see a little bit of sprouting on a few cobs. So we'll have to watch for that.